I'm a performance artist, but also a painter, a sculptor, a street artist, and I'm a dancer at the core. I think art is actually, you know, whatever you manifest, let's say it's a painting, it's a poem, and art goes beyond. And nowadays I feel art lies in the relationships with people and the conversation you have with them. And also what that conversation open up for you and what you open up for them. So we deliver to each other new gate to open and keys to open them wide. That's how I see it. The responsibility of an artist is to, to give the key to people, but also to be able to open yourself as well when someone delivers to you the key. I do this delivery through visual presentations, manifestations of the self, of my experiences. There are lots of colleagues who don't feel the responsibility and take maybe the artwork very lightly, which I respect. But on my, on my way of dealing with art, I feel really responsible about what I'm delivering to people. There must be some kind of lightness, and I think I put that lightness with the humor, but talking about very serious matters. Very serious matters can, love can be a very serious matter. Love is actually a very serious matter because we don't know how to love. We, we are experimenting it, sure, but we don't really know how to deal with it because that's a very powerful weapon, love. And that's what could solve the problems of the world, but because of that, the fact that we don't really know how to work with this important tool, which is love, we, we do strange things, bad things, or the world goes really bad. We don't know how to treat the earth, we don't know how to treat each other even. We don't even know how to give a direction to the mind, because the, the mind still gives you a lot of solution options that sometimes are really su superficial and irrelevant. So it's up to us to make the selection of what is good and what is bad. And, bad, and the, the mind and the heart, they're connected. Sometimes we forget. And when these two things come together is when we can really take a good decision. Because decision it also comes from the heart, but it's not only that. The mind has to be present, I think, and I feel. And uh, so the responsibility as an artist for me is to be aware of all these layers that we have as human beings. I'm in constant discovery as we are. We are here now in constant discovery. We are discovering together. For me, it's not that I want to really lead the idea around the conversation I want to have. I just want people to have a conversation about something that is not yet existed or they've never seen before. It's totally new. They, they, they get curious and I think that curiosity is what, what interests me people to have because it's like opening certain parts of the mind that wasn't open before and through that make them grow their imagination like this cloud. It's like they start creating in their head what, uh, what uh, they, whatever they think. So that the kind of creation is what I'm interested in. And also it's a conversation that lies around the visual poetic act. So there is poetry around that and they will start thinking about that. And that, that's already enough for me. And also they will talk with someone else about it. Maybe there is someone next to them and they start to have this conversation and they take off layers and layers, and then they get to a, a solution. Okay, this must be this. And the unfolding on their own is for me enough to, to feel satisfied because they got to a manifestation of the, of the visual input that I gave. So they kind of manifest, if they have a solution, it's already a manifestation of their thoughts. And that's what interests me. Yeah, because if you think about it, it's all in our hands. Even if, if someone even give us the, the really, oh, look, you have to do this and this and this in order to arrive. No. 
in order to be better human beings, in order to be more open and more forgiving, we need to f do it, the work. We have to do the work ourselves. So I think I give just tools for people to do the work themselves. Yeah, and it also depends by each action has a different element of uh, discovery. So each action, because some of my actions are quite political, but they firstly spiritual. I dressed a tank with a big pyjama. That was for me in general to, to, to say that we need now, it's time that we make all wars and to, to go sleep, not just the wars, the conflict that we have inside that then is manifest on, on Earth. Human beings has to understand that this is a destruction is not convenient for anyone. There is always a little uh, virus there trying to infect their illness to the world. But the healing part, we all have to do it. It's, slow. it's, it's a slow process. No? I started performance art through dance. So dancing was natural for me. I, I've done lots of different practices and uh, dance techniques. Uh, I got affectionated with a few of them. Um, and, you know, whenever I was, let's say, I started performing dance, and then through art, I went into performance art. But I also, sculpture kind of made me a performance artist because it made me very aware of materials, possibilities. Even when I was creating a large uh, sculpture, I was starting with clay, already like pushing the clay, I, I felt like, oh, this is, this is something. Then I began creating uh, um, works in urban spaces and also creating sculptures that I would wear for, for each work, uh, for each action. And that made me slowly go more and more into performance art, a little bit further from dance, but dance is always there. It became smaller, it's more internal. So even if I'm still completely, I learned presence. Presence is something that it dance within, it stays there, but it's felt outside. So I think that's very important for what my practice is, because I expand and communicate through the silence. And the silence is understood universally. You don't need a language. And that's what I, I do when I deliver a performance. And I'm trying to, not I'm trying, I'm getting simpler and simpler in what I'm doing, because I believe that in the essence, there is an answer in everything, but the essence is not easy to achieve. It will require a lifetime work. Taking off what is not needed, it's actually taking, taking a lot of effort. You cannot force it. You cannot force the, the essence. You cannot force the simplicity of things that is most powerful thing that can happen. Even in something intricate, there is simplicity. I believe so and I think never forget that the joy of the creation is also a very important thing that makes us simple in a way because there can be theory there can be concept but the joy of it never for me shouldn't disappear it should be still there the laughter around that so I'm a very serious performer, but I do a lot of ironic, I'm quite ironic. Sometimes people laugh when I do something because maybe visually can, you know, when they see the ice cream, but then they see also the suffering behind it. And I'm very interesting, interested about that because that's part of all collective experience that we have as human beings. And yeah, yeah, the process is different for everything. I always have a sketchbook with me. I always sketch. Sometimes ideas come through drawing and thinking about something. Sometimes it's about observing people. Sometimes it's about misunderstanding. Sometimes I misunderstand something. I look at something, I see the performance I'm gonna do. It's just a misunderstanding. 
sometimes I dream, like the ice cream performance came through a dream. I woke up around 3 a.m. and I sketched the image. Um, sometimes I think about a topic and I dig in it and I go like, oh, this topic. And now work, working is very important, like to have a walk. Um, and observing, putting on paper, thinking about the topic, talking to people. Sometimes I need to talk to people, to ask them, especially when it's something not really related to my country and my up upbringing. I need to talk to people. I need to feel their experiences about stuff. I have, I have a lot of experience, so I, I have a quite wide, wide understanding of human experience, but I need sometimes to, to have a conversation with people and to experience what they're experiencing. And I think em the emotion and uh, empathy is very important for me to dig very deep into other people's experiences and bring it to myself. So it's many ways as you hear it. Drawing is a big thing. Also painting sometimes help me to discover new performances. I'm nowadays thinking about next, what's next? And I, I don't know yet, <laughs> but it's coming. Uh, it, it's forming itself slowly. Regarding your question about how I feel about the empty moments, if there is one, when there is one. It's kind of scary sometimes, but you know that it's a process. So it's not that scary at the end of the day. It's actually uh, something that we should all know that exists in this part of the process, because no nothing is full, filled up all the time. Like there is emptiness and the emptiness is very important. Even if you think about socializing, it's so cool socializing, but at some point you feel drained and you feel like you need that time for yourself, that recharge time to be on your own space with yourself. And I think that's very important and it also reflects what I'm talking about, about art and that pose you get. You need that time of nothingness, daydreaming, otherwise you couldn't, uh, it doesn't work, you need that. And of course, you can have very prolific periods where you work like crazy. But at some point, you need to recharge, you need to stop. I, I'm also a Vipassana meditator. So that uh, requires you to be still, not uh, moving, just focusing on, on your natural breath for a long period of time. And that taught me a lot. It taught me to just observe without action, no judgment, equanimity, and that teaches me, taught me a lot. It taught me a lot. It taught me also to increase my own presence, which is something very abstract, but it does exist. I said this a few times. For me, art is a sort of religion. Um, because I believe in the power of, of art as is mother nature somehow. Because nature is a creation, beautiful, it created incredible things, like in, incredible things. Also how we function, how we think, how we grow, how we develop, how plants work, how animal works. This is all like incredible creation that cannot be Artists try to imitate that. They achieved great things. Now digital art is trying to imitate human experience. It's creating beautiful things. And uh, I believe that art can grow us as human beings and also it makes us creators a little bit. If there was a creator out there, we actually reflecting that creator, we mirroring that creator. So we are reproducing what Mother Nature is, did, is doing, what it did, and it's constantly transforming as art is transforming as well. Art is also transforming. It's not anymore about painting or sculpture. Yeah, it's still like that, but it's changing. It's transforming, it's widening, it's becoming huge. It kind of embraces all of us. Um, I feel 
that's why I feel responsible as an artist. I, I'm a kind of messenger, <laughs> but I don't. When I say art is a, a religion, I don't even like to use this word because this word is really like wrong. It made a lot of disasters in the world. But you understand what I mean when I say religion. Is I have faith in art. I have, uh, yeah, it's my big companion. It's my big company. It's my big love. It's everything. Uh, and includes a lot of stuff in it. So that's why it's wonderful. Mm -hmm.